Support Wrestle Talk. Give us a subscribe. We've given you our best wrestlers. We've given you our best matches. We've given you our best pay-per-views. We've given you our worst matches. Now it is time for our worst pay-per-views slash PLEs of 2022. I am Luke Owen, D-A-D. That is Sharper P. Quinnell. That is Tempest. And welcome to the Wrestle Talk Podcast Channel Awards. Worst pay-per-view award 2022 award please if this is your first time here press the subscribe button press the thumbs up button get in your comments down below what do you think is the worst pay-per-view of 2022 as we count down our list mm. now just before we start recording this you both uh laughed and said gee i wonder what it will be mm. hey i mean look maybe the nominations will surprise you maybe maybe I, I'm curious about this one. We really struggled to get to this five. Was oh, yeah. This was hard. This one was a it. real hard one. Like, you had to dig for bad yeah. pay-per-views. Yeah. I was going to, like, oh, okay, what other promotions did a pay-per-view this year? <laughs> yeah, that one was pretty bad. Yeah. It's an NXT show in there I didn't like. But otherwise, I mean... There weren't that met. There weren't five bad WWE shows this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was hard to pick this one out. Absolutely, yeah. So the way that our nominations work is that uh, everyone who is eligible for it, which is us as hosts, all of our editors, our website writers, our one hundred dollar Patreon backers, and wrestling influencers, get to submit their five worst shows of the year. Their worst show gets five points. Their second show gets four. The third gets three. So on and so forth. I have total up all of those scores to reveal the official top 10 worst pay-per-views for the WrestleTalk Podcast Awards. Let's waste no time and get into this. So, starting with the top, the five that didn't make mm. the top 10. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. I'm very curious. I don't know if this would be the first time ever. If there's, any, if there's going to be crossover between what's on the best pay-per-views and the worst. Let me just quickly check. There's definitely one. Mm -hmm. I'll just quickly check. I think there's only one mm. that's actually on the best pay-per-views and on the worst pay-per-views. Yep. And it's very interesting because they've basically appeared in the exact same position. <laughs> <laughs> interesting. Really did split the vote. Yeah. Um, although there is also one here, but it did not make it into the top 10. So Ric Flair's final match. Uh, yeah. was in at number 15 that got five points the world on gcw got six points including one top level nomination is that the one wow. from the the hammerstein ballroom yes yeah. oh, interesting impact wrestling overdrive that got six points uh nxt takeover in your house got six points Ooh, i voted for that one show sure sucked with 12 points forbidden door i think mm, some of that all is right the disappointment that it was not the true dream. And also, yes. we, as we talked about in the best pay per view, it's a bit of a cursed pay per view in terms of like the build up for it and yep. everyone being pulled from the show. For yeah, Bud, but, but also, it was very good. By yeah, no, there, there's no it way it should be very on, good. Yeah, yeah, there's no way it should be on the worst pay per view list of the year. I can understand like the ending bit leaving us out tasting people's mouth being like it's an angle for blood and guts that's not great the but same way that i just forget that the karaoke bid mm -hmm. and clash at the yeah. castle yeah, 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 happened yeah. i just forget that that happened at forbidden yeah. door i've just spotted another two that were on the best pay-per-view list nice uh, and we're going to start with one of those in at number 10 with 16 points five nominations two of which were top level aew double or nothing people really don't like cm punk huh <laughs> yeah, i yeah. i think that's it I think it is the 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 buckshot spots, mm -hmm. the blown buckshot spots, the injury that comes off the back mm -hmm. of 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 that, the dropping of the title, well, not dropping of the title, the interim, like that is almost like the genesis point of mm -hmm. AEW's downward slope in 2022 before it picks back up mm -hmm. by the time Full Gear comes around. There's yeah. some stuff on this show that I wasn't a fan of at the time. There were yeah. some things that I was disappointed by. I mean, like. The whole MJF Wardlow match yeah, is that's basically one. just a non-factor at that point. Bam, Bam non-factor. Because, non I mean, it's a squash match. It's not going to be remembered as this great performance regardless, but it was Wardlow's crowning moment that nobody really remembers because mm -hmm. everybody thinks about everything else at this point. But there were a few matches on this show where I was really hyped for, thinking that this was going to be another card of just like 10 straight four and a quarter star matches or better. And, like, the Adam Cole, both of the tournament finals for the Owen Hart Cup were just mm. kind of fine at best. Yeah. You had it be a heel couple win in this mm -hmm. really heartwarming moment of Adam Cole and Britt Baker. And that... Owen heartwarming. Well done. Martha heartwarming. Mm. And it just, like, I know that Adam Cole was injured shortly thereafter, but it just 
felt like an excuse to give the couple another thing. Mm -hmm. And, like, Britt Baker winning never led to anything whatsoever. Yeah. Jade Cargill's match on the show with Anna Jay wasn't very good. So, like, there are things sprinkled throughout this show that I was not a fan of at all. I think it's kind of on equal par with another AEW show that we might talk about in a little bit. Maybe, maybe not. But still, I think it's like, I still think it's a good show. Mm -hmm. I think it's just, it's not the caliber of AEW show that was like the revolution and, yeah, and, yeah. and, and full gear before that and all mm -hmm. out before that and double or nothing before that. AEW was really running a very, very good track record from double or nothing 2021 until double, du 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 <laughs> double or nothing 2022. And this was the one that kind of broke the streak of like, well, there's a pay-per-view of the year contender and I still like it. There's good matches on this show. I really like Death Triangle and House of Black. That's awesome. I really, I might be the one, but I really like the Young Bucks and the Hardy Boys match, even though Jeff Hardy kind of gets knocked out, but I am the biggest Hardy Boys fan in the world. Yeah. There's a lot to that show that I think can be plucked out and still really enjoyed, but there are some duds too. I would also say, we spoke about this on the best pay-per-view show as well, that like when you have certain expectations for a show and those aren't met, it feels so much worse. In the same way that like we didn't think the Royal Rumble matches were very good, because one, they're bad matches, but it's so much worse because they're Rumble matches and mm -hmm. they can be so great. In the same way that AEW is on a real hot streak and this was like, oh, this show was fine. I'd give it like a 7 out of 10 show. Yeah, as yeah. opposed to a 9 or I, 10. I think you know? like in a year that's had so many great pay-per-views, mm -hmm. like it coming in at number 10 yes. is like, that really feels a lot to me. Like, I mean, I know we've got two top level noms, but the other ones were like, ah, I guess that. Like, yeah. I, I'd yeah. give it to try yeah. and fill out my top five. Joint eighth position with 17 points each. Both of them did get top level noms. <laughs> in fact, actually one of them got three top level nominations. Jesus. NWA Hard Times 3 mm -hmm. and WWE's Extreme Rules 22. So, yeah. Extreme Rules, we talked about a little bit in the best of. It's just funny as well because when it came up, in the, it was low down in the best of list. And, mm. like, I think, again, it's because it's a kind of a fine show. Yes. When you actually look back, it's like, I, I didn't really like the fight pit much. Mm -hmm. I like the stupid nonsense of the edge and yeah. Finn some Balor. people didn't like that match. Yeah. Some people really did not like that match, but mm -hmm. I liked the stupid yep. soap opera stuff. It didn't need to go 40 minutes, but mm -hmm. like, you know, it was it was long. But then like I was like, what else was on that show? And it's like, oh yeah, there's the Ronda Live match. Mm -hmm. And yeah, across the board, like it's the aside from the Bray Wyatt return, mm -hmm. I remember doing the review of it and I felt like a I felt like a right heel coming in to do that review. Because everyone was like, that's an amazing show. What an amazing show. Because the Bray Wyatt thing was mm -hmm. so good. And I came in being like, yeah, but if you remove that, mm -hmm. it's borderline fine otherwise. It's one of those pay-per-views that doesn't have Roman Reigns on it. Yeah. And, and just, you notice. Yeah. And you notice. You know, there are other shows where it's just like, you may, you can fill out a Money in the Bank card with the Money in the Bank matches and not have a Roman Reigns title defense. And you can still have a decent little show. This was a card of matches that some of them were ones that people cared about. Others like Imperium and Brawling Brutes were very good and people were, you know, everybody enjoyed that match. I sure did. But there's not a whole lot more memorable things and it does feel like one of WWE's real B shows of the year. Yeah. And there weren't that many of them this year, but this was mm -hmm. one. Absolutely. Seven nominations. I'm really surprised that one of which was top level, which I think is unfair. But yeah, NWA Hard Times, four nominations, three of which were top level. This is, it's the Tyrus thing. It's the yep. triple threat. Stephen Larson? <laughs> no, I, I voted for this. Yeah, this I think was I, on my list. This was on my list as well. Um, this is some garbage. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not a good show anyway, but like the, the main event is real bad. Like Tyrus is... I know like we had Ronda Rousey appear essentially four times in the worst mm -hmm. match thing, but like if it was a bigger platform, Tyrus would have way more matches in the Yeah. And it's not just because people on social media don't like him because he's now a Fox News pundit mm -hmm. and things like that. He's also like legit terrible. Mm. He's awful. Yeah. You see that one spot of him yeah. falling down. And he's your NWA world champion. Jeff Jarrett held that belt. You show it some respect. Like. His name is Jeff. <laughs> oh my God. He's he's dreadfully bad. He is. Yeah. Yeah. And he's old and he's 
big, there's nothing that you gain outside of having your NWA title on Fox News. And if that is something that makes you want to put the title on him, you do what you want to do with your money, Billy Corgan. Yeah, but holy Bill, crap. Billy Corgan, I think it was in the Fightful interview being like, like, we don't push Tyrus because of his political views and because he gets his clicks and stuff. And I'm like, BS, yes you are. There's no other reason to push him. Just say that you're, that's why you're doing it. Mm. Just say, well, I get to have the NWA World Championship on Fox News. Because that's a good enough reason to do it. But don't lie and be like, I'm actually pushing him because of his wrestling talent. Because that's a flat out lie. Yes. Enough of that. In at number seven, with 29.8 nominations, four of which were top level, Crown Jewel. Interesting. So that was from... I haven't seen the show. Um, But from what I heard at the time, fun matches, bad finishes was the, I believe, the consensus. There were a lot of funky finishes a lot of on funky this finishes. show. I think this also goes to show, same thing with, like, Double or Nothing and Extreme Rules, that, like, this is a uh, 10 worst pay-per-views list that is helped by there not being that many bad shows this year. Now, mm-hmm. you got hard times in there, filling it out with a proper stinker, but otherwise, a lot of these shows kind of populating the bottom chunk of this list. Yeah. Not that bad. Mm-hmm. I think that's a good thing for 2022. Mm-hmm. This show was a show of highs and lows. I did live reactions for it. This was a show that was, at the very least, saved by a main event. It was a great main An event. An incredible main event. A surprisingly great main event. Actually. I knew. I said to you, this <laughs> you one did. was upset on the podcast. I was like, yeah, but it's going to be great, though. It's going to be <laughs> yeah. fantastic. And I said and there's going to be one really good near fall when he gets the punch, and then that's it. Fantastic well, yeah, match. T- turns one, out there were loads of really good ones. One of my favorite matches of the year. Like, I loved this match. But there was a lot of stuff on here that wasn't as great. I was not a big fan of uh, the Bianca Bailey match. There were a lot of I, spots that in this match. That match sucked. I'm, I, I know there were some a people lot were... of spots that fell apart in this match. I was really surprised because I, I didn't do the live reactions to this. Mm-hmm. So I was just checking social media and stuff. And there was people going mad for some of the spots. And I was like, I'm really looking forward to watching this match. And I watched it the following day, and I'm like, what were people going nuts for? This match sucks. I, like, Dave gave this, like, four and a quarter stars. And what? I was like, what did you watch? With the golf cart thing going yeah. two miles an hour and being like, oh, what? Like, it was so slow and clunky. Yeah, and, like, I don't want to be, because I'm always like, listen, Dave's star ratings are his opinion. And don't I'm not going to be a hypocrite and be like, well, I disagree with this one. So, <laughs> so now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be that guy. But I was watching it, and I was like, I don't see what people are seeing in this match. The the finish was wonky, where Bailey gets trapped in a ladder that she could escape easily from. Easily get out of, yeah. There was a lot to not like about it. Yeah. But you just kind of go through the rest of the matches on this card, and like the Lesnar and Lashley match was like five minutes with a weird finish. Yeah. And the 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 women's tag match was a really wonky finish because clearly this was a more contrived thing that pieces were just not in the right places for. And you got a Moss and Braun just lumbering around. They did the power slam spot. That's it. That's what you were five stars, for. You know, <laughs> according to some. But I overall thought that this was an enjoyable show. Like, I didn't think that this would be a show that would place on a list like this. So don't get me wrong. But I do also see the justification for having it on here because of bad finishes and because of this and that and the other thing. In at joint fifth with 32 points each, WWE Money in the Bank and AEW All Out. Two shows with bad ladder matches. Yeah. Yeah. With ladder matches with finishes that no one liked. Yeah. Uh, Okay. So the all out thing. One, I think it's not the best AEW show of the year. It's so long. It's very long. It has the bad casino ladder match. I said this on the. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there, Mm -hmm. but anything I'd say in the best show, I watched it in two chunks. That helped. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're watching this live in one go. Oh, it's long. It's very long. And it had the bad casino ladder match. Uh, and a few other weak points on the show as well that I think didn't didn't uh, lend to its uh, its grandeur at all. Uh, but I think the biggest thing is Brawl Out, which really, really tarnished the whole thing. Because this was kind of, it started at Double or Nothing, but this was the real, like, pinnacle of, oh dear, AEW's a bit crap right now, isn't it? Not in terms of necessarily the product, but just the environment and the perception from everybody surrounding the company at that time was like, oh piss 
And this was the real culmination of everything with that. There's yeah. a huge stain on this show. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there is. Yeah. It's, I think, again, because we talked about this on our best pay-per-views list, because this was on there as well. Mm -hmm. I think if you watch it in a vacuum, it's another 7 out of 10. Pretty mm -hmm. good, pretty good pay-per-view. Some real bad so, duds on there. Starks, so, yeah. Hobbs. Starks, Hobbs, Athena and Jade. Mm -hmm. Like, you went to go get the pizzas at the start of Athena and Jade and came back and was like, it's over. <laughs> yeah. It was only like four minutes long and it's over. Yeah. Like, Jungle Boy and Christian's an angle and yeah. not at all what people were kind of expecting. The ladder match was what it was. But there's so many really good moments on this show as well. I like the main event. I like the main mm -hmm. event too. I think Punk Moxley's really good. You've obviously got the Elite and Dark, and dark Order thing that Great was match. one of the best That's things so on the good. whole show. Daniels and Jericho was real good good it's mm -hmm. just like because it's a it's one of 15 matches yeah yeah it sort of gets swallowed up by the whole thing mm -hmm. like we haven't even mentioned but there's like dark order against miro darby and sting and that's fun is it oh yeah the house of black yeah yeah, yeah. sorry <laughs> that that that's again, right that was on that show yeah yeah just more oh, yeah. fun yeah. things like a lot of really good fun matches Kingston Ishii's on. Yeah, it's, it's on, on the, the buy-in. Buy buy yeah. Yeah. yeah, but like again, it's one of fifteen, so it's yeah. hard to like keep track of all of it. Yeah, and it again, I will never think about any of those matches first when I think about All Out twenty twenty two. And I think that, like, as much as it's not the pay per view's fault that what mm -hmm. happened afterwards affects it. It's just how you leave them. Mm -hmm. And they yeah. left them that night mm -hmm. not thinking about the show that they just watched. Yep. I wonder how many, like, I mean, it's 12 nominations for All Out, 13 nominations for Money in the Bank, but of the 12 for All Out, three of them top level. I do have to, I don't, it wasn't my top level nom, so mm. I wonder how much of it was, mine. like, it's the brawl out or fallout or fallouts yes that's like the real like that's the sticking point for it. like you say like it's the black mark against it when you think of that paper you don't think of anything on that card you just see that image of punk and tony kind of that media scrum and the muffin mm -hmm. yep the most, it's a the, shame the main character yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i'm also surprised by the money in the bank show being on here as well yeah well like, I, was, I was gonna remind myself of, of what else was on that show because i mean like it has what I think is the WWE pay-per-view match of the year, other than like the two five-star ones, like, I, aside from those two. I think Uso's Street Profits was yeah. real, real. I mean, for me, it was like match of the night, and it was yeah. really, really it's good. Great. And like Lashley beating Theory for the US title was actually a really good moment. Like That was the moment when it was like, holy hell, this crowd is into Bobby Lashley. Mm. I think a lot of this is, it's the Theory backlash that there was at the time, yeah. which is that like, uh, this kid is being pushed beyond his means. Mm -hmm. uh, he is like 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 Baron Corbin, Constable Corbin was in in twenty whatever it was. Where it was like twenty eighteen, yeah. yeah. It was like oh yeah, and you're now Seth Rollins's world title contender. Like I don't think he is though, because yeah. he is a mid card guy in a waistcoat. Like I don't think he should be our top guy. And theory winning money in the bank was like this. <sighs> okay, so. This is the direction we're going, I guess. And it's not just the push, I don't think, of theory. I think it's the way they did it for the Money in the Bank match. It was janky, to say the least, for this. And it was just like, it it was, uh, again, left a, a, a sour taste in your mouth afterwards. Yes. I actually forgot. It was Belair versus Carmella for the Raw Women's Championship. If you'd, yeah. have, if you'd have quizzed me on it, I would have said 12 names before I got to Carmella. Yeah. I had yeah. forgotten about that one. Mm -hmm. And I mean... Bless them. I think that <laughs> that that women's money in the bank match is well not good. Mm. Yes, yeah, that's it's not good, is it? Just a lot of the ladder falls over mid spot, and people are kind of stumbling around, and they fall down, and it looks like they kill themselves yeah. landing on the ladder this way and that way, and yeah. like. I saw a lot of people at the time being like, "Oh, you can't kid gloves the the women's division and everything." It's not like that. It's just just wasn't a very good match. And it's disappointing. Yeah. Because if Liv Morgan won this ladder match and it was like the best match of her career and this great thing that you could show people be like, look at everybody be so happy about Liv Morgan. It's just kind of like, you know, it's, it's like Ryback winning the Intercontinental Championship in a crap Elimination Chamber match. Yeah. You know, it's just like, it's not the cool moment that it might be for that one person getting their mm -hmm. big moment because the match isn't as good. And then follow it up with, like, nobody wanted her to cash in on the same night because everyone was like, they keep doing the same thing. Yeah. Can we do something else this year? This year? Yeah. 
And they did it again. Yeah. yeah. But I would say, like, lone highlight. That and the Uso Street Profits match, which were dead good. But, like, yeah, Liv Morgan cashing in and winning. I was like, well, at least that's something. You know, I've got a nice it's, thing. It's but you're, be, but but you're yeah. right. Like, it's, it is something that I saw the year previous and the year yeah, previous before exactly. that. And Good before for Liv that, Morgan. That. Asterisk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In at number four, with 33 points, only one point more, 10 nominations, one of which was top level, WWE Day One. Ooh. I forgot that was this year. Yeah, the first day of Hot the year in dog. Fact. It's the show where, because of Roman getting ill, mm-hmm. the proposed main event was changed to Brock Lesnar beating Big E yep. for the WWE Championship. <sighs> Set a real bad tone for the build to Mania. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, I think because we've had all of the Vince stuff and Brawl out and Cody and this, you know, there's like so much news, it's quite easy to forget how janky January through to April was in terms of that WrestleMania main event. Go oh, yeah. watch Survival Series and see the path that that, that WWE title gets before it gets to Re- Roman Reigns at WrestleMania because oh, it's not it's, linear. It's all over the show. It's on different people. It's changing hands. It's and bad matches and mm. bad choices. It's so funny as well because like I mean, Meltzer at the time reporting like in January, I think he even reported in December, it's like, yeah, the main event of WrestleMania is going to be Lesnar versus Reigns for the title and then in january i was like yeah it's gonna be for all the belts mm-hmm. and then they kept swapping the belts around and i was like dave's getting it wrong again and dave's like no it's still the plan yeah. i don't know how they're gonna get there but yeah. that's what they want to do they want to do winner takes all that's what they ended up doing and it is like day one not only that it's also madly forgettable mm-hmm. so it's got a really bad main event finish which is and it's only like a 10 minute match because it's, yeah, it's really, really it's short really i don't even short. think it's 10 minutes it's like a nine minute match or well, something it's a rock yeah. match so yeah. it's not gonna go long is it and there's five guys in there as mm-hmm. well and the rest of the card is like mad forgettable to the point where is like madcap moss it's or, Cap or, moss or corbin and, against mcintyre i think it's moss because they were building to drew and corbin because that's that's, that's, that's right the, that's the big match you want to yeah, build yeah, to yeah, a mania yeah. so you yeah. have to go through uh madcap moss at day one yeah i and he wins yeah i I think think, (laughs) i think primarily the thing that this show is remembered for the the immediate thing when you said day one that i thought of was biggie losing the wwe championship oh yeah Yeah. and that is yet again brock lesnar winning the wwe championship from a guy we did not want to see lose the belt edge wrestles the miz on this show i was gonna say it's edge versus miz yeah. Yeah, it's Drew Cap. I know Drew beat Madcap Moss, in fairness. Well, there we go. Eight minutes 25, that main event meant. Eight minutes 25. It's it's no like eight seconds for Edge Kofi. Miz for 20 but, minutes. Edge of Miz is 20 minutes. Long. But losing the WWE Championship in eight minutes to a guy that was not scheduled to be in that match beforehand. That's real bad. Yeah, real bad. Two members of the New yeah. Day's done that too. Yeah. I know it's not Brock's fault. It's the way he's booked. But, yeah. but like, God, I, yeah. it's rough. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Rough like, like you saying that, like, if you said day one, I'd be like, yeah, it's a show. It's fine. I didn't have like strong feelings about it one way or the other. But looking mm-hmm. at that card and everything, I was like, oh, yeah, this was really just kind of during the period where everyone was kind of sick of this company. Yeah. Sick yep. of the direction. We were like, again, as we said in, in the best matches one, they were dangling something in front of us that we really wanted and sort of giving it to us with Big E's title reign. And then just like, nope. What a crap run. It was a terrible run. A terrible run. Uninspired, no direction, no big title matches after that Drew match. Loses to Roman at uh, Survivor Series. And then his next title defense is losing it to Brock Lesnar in an eight-minute match eight that he minutes. wasn't in. Yeah. And it was just like, that anybody holding out hope that it was going to get better... That was you oh, getting smacked in the face with it. Dude, when people were telling me, just wait till Biggie's in the Rumble. And I'm like, yeah, and you'll see him be eliminated real quick. Because mm-hmm. he's back to the tag team division mm-hmm. with you, bud. Because I, I saw it happen with Kofi. Yep. yep. In at number three with 51 points. We've jumped up from 33 to 51 points. 20 nominations, two of which were top level. WrestleMania Backlash. I believe this was Sullivan Bo Brown's worst pay-per-view of the year because yep. he did the live reactions to it and had a terrible time with it. Because <laughs> he's pretty the, uninspired. Yeah, a bo- <laughs> it's a boring show. It's that's boring the, show. that's the problem with it. Yeah. And like, and it's remarkable as well. Roman's on the show. Yep. Yeah. But they changed the direction of it because it was supposed to be the unifying of the tag titles. Mm-hmm. And then Roman was like, no, actually, I don't want you to do that. So we're going to have a six-man instead. After and then, saying that he wanted them to do that. And then the week after was like, 
no, actually, I want you to go and do that to go and win the tag titles. Why don't you just do it at the pay-per-view then? Yeah. They made something that could have been quite interesting in the unification of the tag titles with RK Bro as well, which is like really over team against the Usos, also an over team. Like that's a that's a fun match with real stakes that wasn't at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. You know, it's something different. Like that's something interesting. And they were like, actually six man. Like it was a good now, six man. It's, it's, and like it's a good match, but now it just doesn't really mean anything when it gets to the end of it. And it's Cody Seth. Which again, like was it was good, but it was like oh, I already Just saw this. Saw this. Amos Lashley saw that. Edge AJ Styles saw that. Rousey Flair saw that. Madcap Moss and Happy Corbin don't want to see that. Oh god, yeah. Like when you actually cracking when you think about it, that's a really bad card. Because that's, that's four of the six matches we just saw four weeks earlier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A match we don't want to see in Madcap Moss versus Happy Corbin, and then a main event that was for whatever reason changed to something that had zero stakes to it. And the bloodline just won anyway. Yeah, yeah. I think again, this is another one of those shows where the perception of it is probably worse than the actual show. Because mm-hmm. I mean, that main event is well good. That that six man is like a proper fun PWG. We're just gonna go out and do like a crazy, you mm-hmm. know, crazy main event six man match. And it's really good, but it's inconsequential. It didn't mean anything, and it was replacing something that people kind of cared about. The Cody and Seth match is really good. That's actually the one good match that Ronda Rousey's had this year against Charlotte in the I Quit match. There's like, that's half the card right there. But the other half of the card is stuff that people really don't care about. And the perception of the show was we've seen it already. Yeah. You know, so again, don't think it's that bad of a show, but the way that people will remember it is significantly worse than that. And I think actually the the most damning thing I say about it is no one will remember it. Yeah. 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 I remember it as the show where like nothing happens yeah. because it is I the six man show. As the show where Sullivan got tickled. Yeah. That's it. That's How what adorable. I remember about the show. In at number two, genuinely very close race mm. between two and one. They swap positions a lot. There was actually yeah. only seven points in it Ooh, in wow. the end. Okay. Because we went from backlash with 51 to 96 points for number two 29 nominations two Mm. of which were top level elimination chamber yeah stupid comments told me i was being too harsh for saying this show sucked (laughs) i had to watch this show the afternoon um, a day off and everything (laughs) sucked stupid show it wasn't a day off was it clearly (laughs) wasn't yeah this show was ass i did not enjoy elimination chamber very much we had a day one there day one with uh brock lesnar winning the title so it's funny we get to elimination chamber and what's the main event oh it's brock lesnar winning the title yeah (laughs) what a mad series of events went through and the champion bobby lashley was just taken out of the chamber because he hurt his arm a little bit weird angle wasn't it and like and like the the ending of that match is just brock lesnar beating up austin theory of like over and over and over again and he does that f5 off the top which Mm -hmm. Sounds cool, but actually isn't mm-hmm. that just lands cool. On his feet yeah. yeah, just lands sits on his down. feet and it's like sits. A tyrus down. bump. <laughs> yeah, it's like a tyrus bump, <laughs> yeah. but like slightly more impressive. But slightly like, better, he yeah. would have killed him if he landed. On his <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm not, I'm not at, I'm not advising them to have done that. But oh, you're saying that you wanted Chris Jericho to land on steel, <laughs> yes. being pushed off the top of the cage. Yes, I am saying that exactly. But like it's this, Reigns show, Goldberg. Yeah, Reigns Goldberg's yep. bad. They, I was really hoping Alexa the best was in a swing. Yeah, in a pod, but it's I, but like, yeah, but I hated that so so much, and I and the, I so yeah, no, I, it's bad. That's my point because we went through like weeks of this therapy thing, yeah, yeah. and then the report came out that they hadn't filmed enough mm-hmm. to make it last until WrestleMania, which is what they wanted it to do. Yep, so they were trying to. Squeak, like eke it out by cutting them in half and then airing the second half of segments like the following week on mm-hmm. Raw mm-hmm. but then they made the choice to just bring it back for Elimination Chamber so they aired like the final three in one episode of Raw and then yep. the end of it was like and oh, by the way I'm in the new Elimination Chamber yeah. now and then she comes out of Elimination Chamber and her character hasn't changed in the slightest like well what was the point of any of it then and then she left again and then she left <laughs> again <laughs> A disastrous beginning to the year for oh. poor Alexa Bliss, and it mm-hmm. has continued and only been saved in the last arguably three to four weeks of the year. And I don't even say saved, there's a bit of a stretch. Like, it's, it's just been fine. It's, just it's been, a bit interesting it's been, now, been and that's better. it. <laughs> it's been better, is all I can yeah. say. At least it's something. Yeah. Um, what else do we have on here? Naomi and Ronda versus Charlotte and Sonya Deville. Oh, yeah. The, uh, with Ronda's one hand tied behind her back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Drew versus Madcap Moss with that. That's, that that's the bump. Yeah. And Becky Lita 
Yeah. Becky took on Lita this year. Yeah, I, I don't was... think anyone will remember it. I I I kind of remember it just because like they did Lita did a promo before the Royal Rumble just like kind of talking herself into a comeback type thing like I'm going to win the Royal Rumble and I'm mm-hmm. going to face you Charlotte at WrestleMania and I was like I want to see it. Mm. I want to see this. That that sounds cool. Sure. I love Lita. Sucks to be you. You got Ronda Rousey, bud. Yep. And like Becky Lynch versus Lita sounds like it would be really cool. But again, it does kind of have that Saudi Arabia stink on it where yeah. nothing on these shows matters. And it's the filler arc mm-hmm. season and it's lame. Even the Elimination Chamber matches on this show yeah. are lame because for some reason, and I very much hope that this gets fixed for this upcoming year, they're really short. Yeah, mm. 15 minutes each. 15 minutes each. Yeah. Because each of the staggered entrants in these in these two matches were like a minute and a half apart, as opposed to the usual like four minutes. So instead of this being a 20 minute match, plus however long the extra bit goes, it is just where it's like an old Survivor Series match where everyone's yeah. getting pinned after two minutes of nothingness. And it just wasn't that good of a show. No, nah, it's pretty boring. Which brings us to the number one position. As I said, by only seven points. I wonder what it could be. <laughs> by only seven points. Genuinely was a toss up between these two. However, with 24 nominations, which is five less than the Chamber got. Mm. But 14 of them were top level nominations. Yep. With 103 points. The only thing that broke the 100 point barrier this year to the Royal Rumble. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 We Bad can show. all agree on something. It's yeah. that this show sucks. Yeah, this was a real bad. A re- not even just two bad rumbles. That is day one, rumble, and chamber back to back to back with a little pit stop at WrestleMania, then WrestleMania backlash, then money in the bank. That is a real bad stretch of pay-per-views. It's the Vince era. I wonder what changed halfway through that. (laughs) Yeah, what what happened to make it stop sucking so much? I think that's the real funny thing when we were having those discussions, the people were like, what was a bad show this year? Then you go back and you're like, I'd forgotten that all of these shows Mm -hmm. were actually quite bad. We all got wrapped up in like how great the Triple H era has been. And you go back and like, what a stark difference. You want to talk about a, a one half of the year being completely different to the other half? Crikey, mm-hmm. 2022. Because oh, these me. these first half of the year shows, I mean, you've that that's bad stretch of shows. It feels like a completely different company to what we have now. Mm-hmm. A, a wildly different company to what we have now. Yeah. And this Royal Rumble Ugh. is, it's no good. One good match on this card, I would argue. Mm-hmm. Rollins and Reigns. Yes. Which I really, really Which did Which still like. had a weird finish. Which, with a crap finish. Has a dreadful finish, I will say. Mm. But I did like the match itself. Absolutely. Like, Rollins coming out to the Shield's yes. music in Shield gear. Yes. Roman's sell of that. Mm-hmm. I love it when wrestlers sell things in entrances. And it, like, amps up the, what the other person yeah. is doing. Is one of his best moments of this year. And he's had a year of great moments. Mm. I had forgotten just how stupid the finish is to this match. Oh, yeah. It's not even just, oh, it's a lame DQ because Roman doesn't break the hold. It's that Seth is dead. He's out. And the referee does like one, two, and puts his hand on the rope. Yeah, that was dumb. And everyone's like, what what are you doing? (laughs) You can't do that. It's me watching football. You can't do that. (laughs) And it's like, oh, no, I'm not going to break the hold. You just put his hand on the rope. Yeah. And that's the one good thing on the show. <laughs> show is ass. Yeah. Both, both Rumble matches sucked. And Rumbles have such a high expectation. Rumbles that- are the easiest pay-per-views in the world to book. <laughs> Rumbles have such high expectations because they are genuinely the most exciting matches of the year. Not just because the Rumble match itself is fun, but because it's setting up WrestleMania challenges. It gives you a glimpse into what feuds are going to be coming for WrestleMania. Fun story beats, fun teasers for the future. All this stuff that's got into it. And there was absolutely none of it on this show. We got two winners that we didn't want that had really anticlimactic entries and runs in the Rumble matches themselves. With nothing interesting in the matches. And then just messes with... Bobby Lashley winning the belt off of Brock so that Brock can then win the Rumble and then yep. Brock just beats him for the title at Elimination Chamber a couple of weeks later anyway. Yeah. So I was like, well, what was the point of any of this? Yeah. The whole thing is all about the Roman and Paul Heyman thing. That mm. yes! It's just nonsense. Like Paul Heyman going flipping flopping both That's back right. before. 
back between both of them. Like through yeah. the first two months of the year, it's just like, okay, well, Roman dumped me, so I'm going to, to Brock. And then three weeks later, it's like, nah, come on, wise man. You can come back to this team. Okay, I'll do that. Let's cost Brock the title. Like, what is happening? Nobody is into any of this. Nope. Nobody wants to see it. And again, we all know what's about to happen in this Royal Rumble match. And we're just driving towards a destination that we don't want to go to. Once Brock lost the belt, mm-hmm. and we all were just like, oh, so he's winning the Rumble. He's then. winning the Rumble. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's 100% winning the Rumble. And it was like a real, like, <sighs> a real deflate. Because you didn't need to do that. Mm-mm. Like, I know, like, because you changed the thing. But here's the thing. Like, you had to change the day one plans because Roma got ill. You didn't need to put Brock in the match and then have Brock win the belt. Like, you are constantly making rods for your own back and then be like, oh, now how do we get out of this situation? Like, would you put yourselves in that situation? Also, it's a fake sport. You can do whatever you want. Genuinely, you know how we always say about how companies should be kind of uh, flexible with their plans. And if something changes, they should, you know, roll with the punches and try and make something good out of it. I think what they tried to do was make something better out of it. Roman's got ill. Cool. We'll make the WrestleMania match winner takes all. We'll have Brock win the belt and it's going to be winner takes all. The problem is that idea sucks. And they, and you got the rumble. Yeah, exactly. You gotta, so you got to be like, well, Brock's got to win the rumble then because the rumble sets up the mania match. And the fact that Lesnar and Rousey won in almost identical ways. Granted, it was 28 versus 30 was their, <laughs> it was their entrances, but it's basically the, the same, same thing. thing. Oh, it was just so uninspiring. What a terrible show. Also, yeah. lest we forget, Edge and Beth Phoenix versus The Miz and Maurice. A feud yeah. where I just watch Edge beat The Miz yeah. over and over again and over again and then we get to like the third match and they're like well you gotta care this time right because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Maurice is here now me going from watching Edge have the rivalry of the year in 2021 WWE with Seth Rollins three excellent matches one after another and I'm like awesome we might have like AJ Styles at Wrestlemania which on paper sounded better than it ended up being but That's something to look forward to. We've got other people here that Edge hasn't wrestled that I'm really looking forward to seeing him wrestle. I'm really, really for this Miz feud to wrap up. And it just kept kept going. going. It kept going and going. They love this thing where they can do a mixed tag with the husbands Mm -hmm. and wives. And they just like bringing Maurice out every once in a mm-hmm. while. That's what she's there for. That's what Just, the Miz is there for. And it's like, like, I get it. They've got a reality show. But like, the Miz is usually really good at it. Like, him and the Miz, like, him and Maurice doing stuff, it's usually really good. But this was one of those ones, like, that's what wasn't good. Mm. Yeah. It's a shame, because Beth's was part of it. Mm-hmm. Wasn't this the thing where he had a, uh, Maurice had a brick, and Ollie lost his mind because she used a brick? Yeah. And she he was a... like, she used a brick, and everyone was like, okay. And... <laughs> And I was like, but she was the brick. And yeah, then it escalated. He, it's kept, like, he kept saying what? to me, it was like, oh man, they've escalated this feud so much. Like she's used a brick. And I'm like, I don't think they have it to. It doesn't matter though. I have no memory of this whatsoever. Yeah. yeah 103 points Wild. for the Royal Rumble. Comfortably, yeah. I think the worst pay-per-view of Easily. 2022. Yeah. yeah. Easily. I'm so looking forward to a Triple H Royal Rumble. Mm. One of the Thanks. things I'm most looking forward to, like the things oh. I'm most looking forward to are seeing how Triple H books a Royal Rumble. And seeing his vision, his WrestleMania card that he makes, his yeah, huh? vision for that. Absolutely. Those are the things I'm most looking forward to. Don't let us down, Trips. <laughs> you got a you, low bar you, to try and get imagine? over. Does he? We've kind of set high expectations. He's be like, come on, Trips. This is going to be a great rumble. No, no, come I'm, on. I'm, I'm with Tempest here. This is a okay. low bar. Okay. If you compare, and like, even if this rumble's got one surprise entry, you're like, well, it was better than last year's rumble. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So don't let us down. Leave a comment down below. What was your worst show of the year? If you've made it this far and haven't already, do press subscribe. Give us a little thumbs up as well. We love to hear from you. Thank you all so much for watching our content we've made this year. We've got one more special video coming out. It'll be on New Year's Eve, which will be myself and Ollie Davis giving our wild and wacky predictions for 2023. That'll be going up on New Year's Eve. But until then, I've been Luke Owen, D-A-D. That has been Chopper Pete Quinnell. That has been Tempest. Jam that jam. (laughs) 